Um, do you have any questions or anything else you want to go through? Um, yeah, one of the other things that I was thinking about, you know, a young physio starting out, maybe wanting to get in pediatrics and the differences between South African physios and Australian physios, um, from a personal level, being dyslexic has probably helped me be more empathetic towards my patients. Um, and that's really something that you can practice over and over and over. And I use it as a rule when the students come into my room, I use this as a rule. You don't write down anything for seven minutes you don't do any exercises you don't do any opinions for seven minutes you just listen um and it's hard because as a new grad you just want to write down everything yep. you just want to yep. you know get it down on the piece of paper but you can remember seven minutes you can remember seven minutes of conversation and practicing that regularly seven minutes when that patient walks in the room don't touch anything else just listen um, that's going to set you off on a really different direction to what you thought you'd be going on. So I, let's I, really say, like, I really like that because it is yeah. very different that, like, um, as you say, the, the average new physio would want to write down everything and they're almost sort of got their head in the paper checking the questions as to what's all right uh, to make sure they don't miss any subjective questions. But I guess your approach is, is to have a chat with them, look them in the eye, ask the questions and kind of build a rapport with them first before anything. And then after that seven minutes, then I ask my patient, can I just jot some of these things down so that I don't forget? I should just jot it down quickly and then I'll actually reiterate it. So it gives me a chance to listen. I get a chance to just jot it down quickly, but then I get a chance to reiterate it. So I said, have I heard this correctly? Is this what you're telling me you want me to do? And often just listening and clarifying what they actually you know, want I've already won them over because they're, they're going, oh, you really heard me. No, you, you're spot on. You, that's, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. And if you can work out exactly what they want, anything you do after that point is going to be in line with what they want. So they're going to automatically be happier because you've listened to them. They really felt heard, but now you're actually doing something according to what they want. The satisfaction levels of those patients is extremely high. Yeah, because why seven minutes? Is that a, just you feel you can really call the amount of information during that time? Um, in seven minutes, the average person in a new meeting would talk for roughly seven minutes. Um, so you've got a seven minute window period. It's a bit of a psychology fact there, but seven minutes is a rough window period where people will feel comfortable talking about themselves and then the conversation starts dying. Nice. Yeah. Like Any other tips for young physios? Um, yes, don't be scared to go outside of the box with assessments. Um, sometimes I've had patients coming into the room and you can see they're so scared, it's a new environment. Sometimes I don't even go into the actual treatment room. I'll just go outside and I bounce a ball with them. Yep. You know, I play a little bit of catch and I call it the human factor. Don't be scared to go away from just the structured setup and go for a bit more informal setup, a bit more informal play. Let them relax, let them see that you're, you're still a human. And I often find that that is super helpful, not only for you as a therapist, because it's going to challenge you to be creative. Um, with MDIS, it's not a copy-paste formula. You can't do what you did for one for the next person. But what is going to be very good for you to do is develop creative ways of doing the same thing for your patient in a way that they enjoy. Good. I love that. I think it's great, great advice. And um, as you say, that sort of, it's it's not, it's not a recipe, one sort of recipe fits all, do you know what I mean? It's uh, very much an individual approach, um, which a lot of people wouldn't do. And then that's, we've never really spoken about it before, but I'm sort of, you know, I can really see now why you build the rapport you do with the clients, because, uh, you know, the first part of the session is just getting to know them as a person and forget about the physio stuff and kind of build the rapport with them and win them over. Uh, and then you can some, sort of move on, which is, Really important in the MDIS sort of sphere, uh, but to be honest, you can take that with any sort of form of private practice. Yes, it might not be for the same length of time, uh, but your sort of tip there in regards to the assessment and just sort of sitting and listening to them for the first five minutes of the assessment without writing anything down, that applies to all, all clients. Uh, and, and listening and understanding what their goals are, that obviously applies to all clients as well.